Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Welcome and thank you all for joining the Resilience and Transportation webinar series, Lessons from China's and Bangladesh's Responses to COVID-19. In this webinar series, we highlight how cities around the world have responded to a global pandemic um, and public health and safety crisis related to mobility and invite experts to share lessons learned so far and thoughts on how future resilience planning will be affected. The series is co-hosted by NUMO, the New Urban Mobility Alliance, GIZ, TUMI, Euroclima Plus, and the World Resources Institute, Ross Center for Sustainable Cities. Today, we'll hear from Dai Zhang Lu, Director of WRI China's Ross Center for Sustainable Cities, about how cities in China have acted in the face of mobility challenges related to COVID-19 and recovery. We'll then hear from Binayak Chakraborty, Administrator Officer in Charge of Singer Municipality, about how Singra is piloting e-rickshaws as an efficient adaptation method against the new coronavirus. And finally, we'll hear from Ni Yang and Shui Ren from Didi about how the shared transportation company has evolved services during the pandemic. As a note, we'll be doing a question and answer session at the end of the presentations, but feel free to submit your questions via the Q&A feature here on the GoToWebinar platform. Thanks again for joining us and let's kick things off with Daizong. Uh, good morning, good good evening. Uh, today I will show some uh, background about the COVID the impacts on China cities urban transportation. So because time is very limited, I will be very quickly. I'm uh, Dai Zhong Liu from WRI China. Uh, I'm a director for Road Center for Sustainable Cities. Uh, first, we have to know this uh, pandemic. Before this pandemic. Uh, WHO already tracked more than 1,400 uh, epidemic during the last seven years. So we don't think this COVID will be the, the last uh, the pandemic of this world. So that's uh, the, the, the first background we, 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 we're thinking about. If besides the SARS, Ebola, Zika, we, we still have some more challenges in the future for the next uh, pandemic. So we need to learn a lot of lessons from this time and prepare well for the next time. And the secondly, let's see the COVID-19, the impact. You can find here is accumulated, the confirmed the COVID-19 cases globally. And the first one we're thinking, uh, most of our experts think is uh, exponential growth. So, so you can find in this uh, figure, uh, that's 1,000, uh, 10,000, uh, 100,000, and 1 million, they are the, the, the eco scale. So we use a lot of volumes to uh, analysis to accumulate the cases and we found that you can find that the green one is China and the South Korea is quite similar to the curve as a China so it looks like the and the today uh, like Italian uh, also control the, the COVID very well but some other country like Brazil India uh, US and Iran still are going up so so the situation there will be more focused on how to control the number of the cases and in the right side, the figure is just to show in China uh, uh, how the daily confirmed case coming from. So you can find uh, today, uh, China is aware of uh, control the situations. So all the information are updated to the 22nd of July uh, this week. So, so, so this uh, basic situation of uh, COVID-19. And the next one, the first challenge in cities is a lot of people say if uh, the urban density is very high, because Chinese city is a very high urban density, a lot of uh, populations there, they're thinking that's uh, a strong link with the number of, uh, of, the, uh, of the cases of COVID. So the first one I want to show you, that's a lot of research already proven that the number of confirmed cases is not directly associated to the urban density. For example, this figure show you the, the New York cities by the, the, the Zoom code. You can find uh, in the left side, uh, this is the density of the different Zoom code. But in the right side is a number of the confirmed cases. And in the Manhattan Island, you can find it's very high urban density, but the very low the cases for one uh, 100 killer uh, keys of the families. So, so, so this show you that's uh, uh, the COVID, the confirmed case, not a uh, direct link with the uh, urban density. So this is very important. That uh, means our urbanization is not the, the, the real reason for the COVID spread. And also this, they show some uh, sample like Seoul. They have a population density is almost 1.5 times 
uh, of the New York cities. But the New York cities, the, the per capita the number of cases is 343 times more than Seoul. So this is some uh, example just show us that the city is still very important. And the density is also means important for the city. Uh, the second challenge for the COVID is we're talking about the economic recovery. So from our history, you can find like a, the SARS, they create almost a 40 billion, uh, 400 billion US dollars uh, lose uh, on the GDP. And we're thinking today, the, the pandemic of the COVID, uh, uh, even much bigger than this number. And uh, the, so they have a lot of a research institute do some of a casting for this year's uh, the GDPs of uh, major economies like the US maybe have a minus 4.6% of the GDP uh, uh, lose. And the China will be better, uh, could be the better one is almost uh, the minus one. This is by the capital economics. And from IMF, they just launched, uh, published a new the GDP forecasting. Uh, China will be the only one country that is, uh, still can have uh, uh, the growth numbers, like uh, one to two percent of uh, GDP growth this year. So uh, this is a, a different uh, the, the, the the forecasting for uh, the, the, the uh, GDPs. And the most of uh, research shows that uh, this year, so globally. The GDP will have a minus 4.7 percent of uh, uh, lose. So this is a, a, a is really the first time it shows in our world that uh, the whole economic will be disaster by the the COVID-19. And uh, when you talk when you saw about the details of the economic recovering, the uh, first one we're thinking about the manufacturing. So this is some uh, uh, analysis from Financial Times. They, they're thinking today China. Uh, the economic activity index is almost uh, the 80% recovered compared with uh, the same times uh, in the 2019. And from the right side, the Caixin PMI is uh, it's a, a, a procurement manager index show you that China's uh, economic, the manufacturing are going back to more than 50%, uh, 50. So that means uh, uh, the China's uh, the factory uh, are going to exp expansion. If it re, uh, below the 15 means they are going to reduce the, the jobs, lose the money. So 50 is uh, the, the, the baseline. And, and then uh, let's see uh, how the COVID impacts on China's uh, the transportation. Uh, let's show you uh, see the, the, the left side of the figures. Uh, the 100 baseline is the same, same period as 2019. So compare the same period of uh, 2019 today, the first comeback uh, travel mode is, uh, is uh, uh, cars. You can find the congestion uh, in most, uh, in 100 cities in China, congestion index is more than the same period uh, of uh, 2019. So the congestion is really bad compared with last year. So that means that a lot of people move, move to the cars. So the car is the first uh, travel mode comeback. And the second one is the green line, gray line. So, so this is uh, the subway. So at the beginning, we're thinking people don't use the, the subway, but it looks like today it's almost 80% of the passenger, the demand is recovered uh, from the data. So looks good. Our urban public transportation, uh, the performance is, uh, is really satisfy us. But uh, now the situation is a long distance travel, like a road, a rail or, or airplanes. So they are still in the 50% the activities or demand as uh, 2019 as euro. Huh? And in the uh, right side, it's just also show you how the coal consumption, uh, road traffic, uh, and other uh, the social and, uh, and the economic index to compare with the road traffic. So you, you still can find the road traffic is good compared with the other, other index, still uh, recovery very fast. And then when we go to more details about the four major cities in China, it's uh, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. It's a tier one city in China. You can find this is uh, the, the metro readerships. It's a seven days, uh, it's a five, five working days average compared with uh, the same week of uh, 2019. So you can find most of the city today is almost uh, recovering as a normal the 80%. And interesting one is uh, Beijing. You can see that's a uh, dark blue. 
they are chopped off during the middle of uh, June of uh, this year. That's because Beijing have a second COVID wave. So they are locked down the city very quickly and you can find the demand go, uh, 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 go, uh, drop off to the almost 20%. Uh, uh, and today, because Beijing controlled the second COVID wave very well, so the subway is demand going back to the last stage. So, so it's very interesting that the public transportation demand is very strongly linked with the COVID issues. And then we compare Beijing, Guangzhou, Shenzhen with Shanghai, because Shanghai is the best city that's recovered from the metro systems. So you can find Shenzhen almost in the same levels as Shanghai. And Beijing, because the second wave is a very dramatic change. And Guangzhou is OK. They are still going back. So this is an overall comparison between the different Chinese cities. We can find how the demand from public transportation recovered. Uh, all the information is updated to the last day. And in the right side, the small figure just show you how the public transportation recovered after the, the SARS, that's a 70 years ago in the 2003, before and after SARS, you can find the Shanghai, uh, the, metro, the metro system really should uh, recover very quickly. Just uh, uh, after one month, you can go back to the normal track. So this is uh, public transportation. So how, what, the, why the, the demand of the, uh, China's public transportation recover so quickly, uh, they have some several reasons. First one, uh, they are a very strong control monitoring the people's temperatures when you're going to the subway system. And all the people on board in, into the metro system, they have to uh, cover by the mask. And then China launched the, the code, the QR code to, to monitoring your, your, your tracking, your, your path inside the public transportation systems. So if they can they have something uh, a, a confirmed case funded, they can easily to info, uh, inform other people in the same place on the bus or metro systems. So this uh, 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 solution have China's uh, public transportation recover very quickly. And we also find that the COVID have a big uh, impact on other mode of transportation. For example, in Wuhan, uh, you can find this uh, during the, uh, the, the lockdown period of Wuhan from the uh, January 20th, uh, 23rd to the March 12th, uh, the, the share bikes almost take uh, 56% of all trips. So you can find during the lockdown period, the share bike, uh, the bike sharing system really play a very important role. And an another is a red heading system in China. I, I think my uh, our colleagues from DD will show you more details about this situation later. Uh, so I just show you some pictures here to the uh, end of the March. That's uh, uh, the share, the, the red heading and the normal tra uh, taxi are, are going back on the, on the normal tracks. So this is uh, why China now launched the new programs to, to stimulate the, the economic. It's called the new infrastructure. They want to use in the 5G technologies, industrial internet or AI or data center to apply on the EV infrastructure or urban real or new safer mobility, these areas, to use this one to improve the infrastructure and use that uh, scheme or program to, to, to stimulate uh, the, the economic recovery. And the final, the, this is the final uh, slide, also show you, today we are also worried about another issue, that uh, means the revenge pollution. So you can find, this is a coal comeback first. You can find here, during the May, the, the middle of the May, China's a coal uh, uh, consumption for the power plant already more than the same period of the 2019. So that means uh, uh, we, we really have a, a very good weather during the lockdown period. But when we go back, when our economic, our people's life come to the, back to the normal, uh, another one also come back, that is a pollutant. So we need to think more about that uh, challenges. And I, I think this also can be uh, a case for other countries to learn. So uh, today we are discussing with the Chinese government to talk about uh, when we uh, recovery our economy, we need to think more green deal or green recovery. So this is uh, my final slide. Hope this uh, basic situation can give you some uh, ideas from China because China is the first country that uh, have a COVID-19 and also we looks like also recover very good. So 
we, we want to show you our lessons and the cases and the hope other countries can, can, can understand our, uh, our, our knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daizong. Um, we're now going to turn it over to Benayak. Thank you, Lin. And greetings to all of you from Shinga. Shinga is very small country, a uh, small city located uh, in the northwestern part of Bangladesh. The total area of uh, the city is about 22 and a half square kilometer with the population of uh, 45,000. It has uh, three small rivers and a big wetland around the city. Uh, the main occupation of the city is uh, agriculture um, and farming. As a partner city of Italy, Shinga participated um, in the Tumi Challenge 2018 and was selected as the winning city um, with a small grant to support the pro proposed uh, pilot project. The project is about to promoting e-rickshaws as a public transport and e-ambulance for uh, emergency health support. The main uh, parts of this uh, project was to construct a garage uh, uh, with a maintenance area, one charging station, one call center, 10 electric passenger vehicles, uh, two electric ambulance, um, driver's trainings, and uh, some publications. The vision was to ensure uh, easy, safe, and comfortable travel with an eco-friendly public transport system, uh, which will be operated by the city only. After the six month uh, implementation period, the project came to the final operation uh, from December uh, 2019. And from then we achieved uh, the project goals uh, gradually. Now, um, the Tumi transport service is the first choice for the city people, uh, especially for the women, children and the um, older persons. We have also proved that uh, the city owned uh, public transport service is not impossible uh, in Bangladesh. About 6,650 people um, move in the city every day, in which uh, 250 people uh, have bicycle, uh, 1,100 people have the motorcycle, 1,000 people move by walk, and uh, 300 people use the two vehicles, and the rest of uh, the 4,500 people use their uh, use the other public transport like. Uh, Riksha. So, um, how Shingra responded in, in, to the corona? Uh, the first uh, infection uh, was found in Bangladesh on 8th March. And the government of uh, the Bangladesh enforced lockdown in the whole country from uh, 25th March. All the public transport are suspended um, in order for ensuring the social distance. We closed all the Tumi vehicles also, but we found that the people are still moving for uh, the daily basic needs like uh, daily foods, vegetables, uh, groceries, medicines, etc. And in that case, uh, considering this thing, uh, our city mayor, uh, Mr. Janazal Fredos, uh, decided to start the Tumi vehicles in multiple ways, like uh, the product delivery service, uh, transportation for doctors and the nurse, uh, ambulance service uh, for the corona patients, etc. The first, uh, at first, we assigned uh, the four vehicles uh, for this service. This service is about to um, deliver the essential products to the door-to-door uh, -door, uh, of the people um, so that the uh, people don't have to go to go out uh, from their home. And we, uh, after starting this uh, service, we got a very good response uh, from the city people. And we received uh, 100 plus uh, calls every day. Uh, for various types of uh, products. We delivered a total of uh, 4,651 uh, 
delivery in the lockdown period. Then when we found uh, the doctors, nurse and the medical staff are struggling, uh, then we uh, decided to um, provide uh, one more vehicles uh, for their transporting. And uh, then um, the, uh, we used uh, two uh, smaller vehicles for, for that service. Also, we uh, assigned one uh, ambulance out of uh, our two, two ambulances um, only for the transporting corona patients. Collecting sample uh, from the remote area is uh, very much um, important, but uh, sometimes the medical staff need to go to a remote area uh, for collecting samples, uh, but uh, the existing ambulance are not able to run on the narrow roads. Uh, on the other hand, the, the uh, other public transport uh, are, are suspended. So we uh, used uh, uh, two vehicles for uh, collecting the samples from the remote area. Uh, in the lockdown period, we um, 100 plus uh, samples um, were provided by our vehicles. We know that um, raising awareness is a very effective way to uh, fight against the uh, new coronavirus. Uh, people uh, had not much knowledge about uh, this virus uh, and uh, they didn't know how to be safe from the virus. Um, so we assigned uh, one vehicle uh, for announcing these alerts through voice recorded miking uh, to the city people in order to raise their awareness. Um, for the pandemic, in numbers of people uh, have become unemployed. Uh, everybody knows that. Um, so. Uh, especially the uh, daily workers, uh, the rickshaw pullers, uh, drivers, um, small uh, shoppers, uh, they faced a very critical situation in, in this period. Uh, then uh, our city mayor uh, set up a separate fund for those people to give them food assistance. And fortunately, many national and international uh, people donated um, into the fund. We delivered uh, free foods to a total of uh, 7,065 families by this fund. We used four vehicles uh, for this service and we uh, delivered the food uh, in the night time uh, to avoid the crowds and um, maintain the social distance. So actually, uh, we don't uh, have a very good hospital in our city. Um, we, we don't have the ICU, we don't have the um, uh, ventilation uh, system. Uh, so uh, we have been trying to protect the pandemic only by two ways. Uh, one is ensuring the social distance and the uh, other one is um, raising awareness. And the result is that uh, the infections are under control uh, still now. The infection uh, numbers are not uh, over a hundred. Um, until now, and nobody has died uh, so far. Uh, so the city people are much benefited uh, by the service of uh, public transport for the safe and comfortable uh, service. And also uh, now they are benefited by the uh, multiple service uh, regarding Corona. Um, the service are also praised by nationally and internationally. Uh, we are very much grateful to um, Tumi for their continuous uh, support and cooperation. Thank you. Thank you to all. Thank you so much, Vinayak. Um, I'm now going to turn it over to the Didi folks, me and Shui. So Didi is actually uh, a Chinese uh, startup uh, that was established eight years ago in Beijing. It's a company headquarters in Beijing and now uh, has business in, in eight countries uh, uh, globally. So primarily we have uh, business in Latin America, uh, Australia, Japan, and of course the whole com the home country, uh, China. So uh, the company now uh, is one of the leading uh, digital uh, transportation platform. Uh, actually in terms of the number of rides and the, number, the service provided to our passengers, uh, Didi is the biggest globally. Well, the company um, was um, just created eight years ago. We are a very young company. 
uh, but the company uh, now uh, provide a full range of app-based ride-hailing services uh, to our customers, ranging from uh, taxi, uh, express, and premier, uh, sharing bikes and delivery, and vaccinated driving, uh, as well as to cities uh, like digital transportation platform, uh, clean energy solutions, and smart transportation. Uh, so the company uh, actually uh, began to international expanding in 2017, uh, and uh, we are primarily uh, doing business in uh, in Brazil. Um, so when uh, so back to the COVID-19 situation, right? So I think uh, Binak, I'm just very happy to see that you are presenting how the Tumi project can help support the community in Singra. Uh, I think we as a corporate also trying our best uh, since the virus uh, broke out in China uh, in, in January this year. Uh, since China was the first country uh, that got impacted uh, by the virus, uh, we quickly began to establish this workforce uh, to protect our, uh, our users and also our employees. Uh, with the purpose of protecting the health and safety of our community driver partners and also uh, the user base, uh, we uh, began to develop some very, very uh, quick actions starting from China and then later rolling out to Latin America countries, uh, which uh, my, co my colleague Shui will uh, share uh, from, uh, from her perspective about the practice in China first. Go ahead, Shui, please. Okay, thanks me for the introduction. Um, I will briefly talk about uh, our actions in uh, China in two parts uh, during the outbreak and recently in China towards the uh, recovery period. Uh, during the break, actually, we have been focusing on providing emergency services to people in need and helping reduce the risk of virus transmission and providing good in-vehicle uh, environment for travel, as well as support our driver partners. For our daily operations, um, actually, we have been applying for key actions, uh, including wearing masks, uh, daily driver temperature checks, and uh, daily disinfection of, uh, routines and supplies, and installing protective dividers. Uh, by end of March, uh, we have launched sanitation stations uh, in about 200 cities in China, where we distribute supplies to drivers and provide car cleaning services. And on our app, pe people can actually read um, the vehicle disinfection re records, like what time, at which station. Um, and uh, next slide, please. Um, in late January, many municipalities shut down public services uh, in public transport or limited their service frequency. Um, so at the same time, they started to organize a special car fleet to provide basic mobility to residents and especially uh, provide the services to frontline healthcare workers. Uh, Didi joined uh, Wuhan's uh, emergency fleet at the earliest possible time. Uh, we quickly developed a special version of the app. Um, in 31 hours, basically, we developed this product for healthcare workers to put it online in January 25th in Wuhan and a dedicated fleet of about uh, 200 drivers as a first batch uh, use this product to help the commute of more than 5,000 medical staff. And later on in the city, the, flight, the fleet seat size increased to about uh, 1,000 drivers. And across the country, uh, about 100, uh, 160,000 drivers signed up for this special fleet program. And um, they helped about uh, 40,000 doctors and nurses uh, in 15 cities in China. In addition to car services, uh, we also provide free back fees during the outbreak to help the medical workers and the community workers to uh, travel around in the city to help people. So we also uh, work with uh, our ecosystem to support our driver partners um, to promote lease extensions and uh, also for financial relief. Um, we try to figure out like new ways to help our driver partners to diversify their new income streams. Uh, since people have to stay at home and um, they uh, stay indoor social distancing and they tend to order delivery. So we launched delivery service in 21 cities in China and our professional drivers uh, actually can be the delivery man. And um, for this new business, our health and safety SOPs also applied. 
Um, this is also a slide show that we also have in the uh, public transit system um, outbreak. Uh, we have the transit operators um, to have them measure real time occupancy rate and alert the operator when it breaks certain threshold. Um, the operator can then increase service frequency to avoid crowdedness on board and on stations to reduce the risks of virus transmission. So recently, we have been uh, supporting the recovery stage of cities, and we see trip demands are rebounding significantly uh, in late February, and bus sharing and bikes are seen to be safer options. And since commuter demands are rebounding first as people resume work, uh, we started a new function around each product to allow users to identify and write with coworkers um, and in March, trips for outdoor activities, dining out, and sports activities actually grew about 2.8 times over February. And in major Chinese cities, we see a hike on bikes and e-bikes, about threefold growth um, on March over February. So, um, and in many cities uh, in China, they issued consumer vouchers to residents, and Didi is part of um, the initiative. Uh, during the first phases, they, do, they distributed travel packages uh, with a total volume of uh, more than 100 million RMB in many cities to help users travel more safely and affordably. So this is uh, what uh, we've been doing in China. And let me hand back to me, who will introduce more on our global actions. Thank you. Thank you, Shai. Uh, so let's then talk about our uh, response to the pandemic outside China. Uh, maybe you can go to the next page, please. Yes, great. So uh, firstly, uh, when uh, the China was about to uh, control the pandemic uh, in China, it was the time in the uh, month of March when the pandemic began to bro broke out uh, internationally, starting from Italy and Europe, and then uh, in Brazil, Latin America, and also, and also other countries. So um, while Didi has a uh, significant presence in Brazil as uh, Night Night, which is a company uh, that Didi acquired in 2018, uh, we begin to uh, adopt the learning in China and uh, try to bring that uh, to Latin American countries, including Brazil, to support our communities uh, as effectively and efficiently as possible. Yeah, so back in March, uh, the pandemic began to break out in, in Brazil. And uh, we've seen that, uh, a lot of cities uh, began to have this lockdown or semi-lockdown mode uh, where the public transportation became unavailable. Uh, so, but still there are a lot of people that rely on uh, the digital platform to do, to commit the daily transportation. So uh, Night Night uh, began to uh, conduct a couple of uh, actions, uh, including the both learnings from China and also some local measures to uh, prevent this, the, the, the virus from spread uh, for, from our uh, best efforts. So firstly, uh, we are the first one uh, to begin this car disinfection in, in Brazil. Up until now, after almost four months of operation, uh, Didi actually um, disinfected more than 150,000 cars uh, in all the cities across uh, Brazil. Uh, this measure help, uh, can, you can see, as you can see from the photo, uh, we, the company use uh, this big machine uh, to disinfect uh, the dry mist machine to disinfect the cars. And this can help uh, have a clear air, clean environment in the car up to 72 hours. And uh, we do this for free. So uh, actually uh, this has become hugely popular among drivers. Uh, they feel more comfortable uh, co uh, co coupled with other measures like opening the car windows. Uh, definitely this help uh, prevent the virus uh, from spreading between passengers and also uh, drivers. So we are the first one to begin to do it in March and we continue to do it right now. And uh, this is very, very popular in different cities, especially in those ones with a bigger impact by the virus. Secondly, uh, back in April, uh, we also initiated the, the project to uh, distribute the sanitization supplies uh, from our 15 protection bases uh, across the nation in Brazil. Uh, to all the driver partners, including uh, the hand gel, the hand sanitizers, and also the masks. We deliver almost half a million masks uh, to our driver partners, uh, so to protect them. So uh, as probably all of you know that uh, in Brazil, 
uh, in the beginning of this pandemic, uh, it was very undersupplied, all the uh, sanitization supplies, including the mask, which is now essential, regarded essential to protect people from this virus. Uh, so a lot of people, they had to either uh, travel without the mask or they had to make, our, make their own mask uh, using some uh, casual covers or uh, their clothes. So uh, we tried a lot uh, to import masks uh, from different uh, suppliers uh, in Brazil and also in China uh, to protect the drivers, uh, try to uh, protect the drivers from the virus. Uh, and also uh, we launched this uh, regulation, these rules uh, by asking both drivers and riders to wear masks during the rides. And how to ensure that? Uh, this is a difficult challenge that we have, but from uh, leverage by leverage in the city, a procedure verification technology introduced uh, by us back in China. Uh, we can uh, digitalize the uh, photo uh, by verifying the driver's uh, status, if they wear a mask or not. So on a regular basis, we ask the driver to submit the photo towards the app, and the app can automatically generate the verification process to ensure the drivers are wearing the mask during the rides. Uh, this is also very well recept, uh, received by the, uh, by the passengers because they feel uh, like being protected by the platform, even this is a very uh, technology-driven measure that we take uh, in cities in Brazil. In addition, uh, we also launched our uh, volunteer fleet. Uh, I think uh, Bianna also mentioned this. Uh, this is a similar measure that we take uh, different in different places. Uh, so in Brazil, we launched uh, uh, a program to support our uh, healthcare workers and uh, medical supplies by basically leveraging our existing driver base. So we have hundreds of millions, hundreds of thousands of drivers online each day connected to the app. So we basically, by donate, donating up to 4, 4 million DIs, uh, Brazilian DIs, to those uh, essential workers who need to travel uh, during the pandemic while where the transportation becomes just unavailable in, the, in cities where the uh, lockdown mode was initiated, uh, we uh, invite them to use our service and they can use that for free. And also we use that technology to ensure it's the specific rides from where those walkers uh, live to those places where they actually work. On a geofence-based technology, we can identify those destinations and then automatically grant them the free rides by adopting the coupon or the uh, donation that we initiated. And this becomes very effective. Uh, we actually have um, a lot of people uh, very welcoming this measure. Uh, we have a great partnership with dozens of uh, city, municipal governments, and the public authorities to assist the transportation of those essential workers. Uh, and also, separately, um, we have um, we have launched our uh, donation of goods and uh, uh, blood. So we also launched a similar program to support that. Uh, initiative uh, up until now, we have more than 80,000 people and patients benefit from that. So those are uh, great resources. We actually managed to leverage uh, from our existing service platform uh, to support the local community. And uh, uh, we are very uh, honored and uh, very humble to be part of the effort to fight against the virus uh, in different cities. Uh, apparently, as the pandemic evolves in Brazil, still uh, ongoing, uh, we just need to push more, right? So uh, we also, uh, on top of that, uh, as a result of this um, efforts, we uh, initiate the launch of uh, the driver supporting program, uh, which will support the driver partners who got a confirmed uh, contamination of the virus. Uh, so globally, we had a, a, a program dedicated to support those drivers uh, with 10 million US dollars, uh, we call the driver relief funds. Uh, the drivers, they, can, they will get the, uh, the relief funds by submitting their uh, medical, uh, medical documents, which proves that they actually got confirmed cases. Uh, so uh, globally, we have uh, already launched that in three months uh, since March. Uh, so it's been four months time. And in Brazil alone, we have uh, supported more than 2,000 drivers uh, since the launch of this program. Uh, who got the, the driver relief fund from us, from the platform, uh, based on the uh, confirmed documentation. So we're very honored and uh, uh, happy to be able to support those drivers, support those people who got impacted by this virus, and hopefully uh, they can uh, get recovered uh, as, a result of this, as a result of that support. So just to recap, right, so 
we, uh, as a mobility platform, uh, actually, uh, we are just an app in people's phone. But we are beyond that during this pandemic. We try to fight more. We know it's not, it's never going to be a perfect solution. Uh, but we just try to push the efforts by guaranteeing uh, essential transportation services to those who need. Uh, we try to expand. Uh, we try to expand our service categories to the people who need, uh, and also we try to bring the technology for good. Uh, that's it. The sharing from us. Thank you. So uh, now we're going to open it up for Q and A. So if any uh, participants have a question, please enter it into the chat box, and we will ask the panelists. So the first question we have is for Daizong. Daizong, looking at transit ridership and car traffic, since car traffic increased beyond 100% uh, compared to pre-pandemic levels, can are transit riders moving towards cars? And if so, how can we avoid this in the rest of the world where cities have not opened yet? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, okay. Uh, the first of all, uh, we observed from China the, uh, the demand, that's a car, uh, from the congestion index, the car is uh, come back more than 100% as a, as a normal, as a last year. So that means uh, a lot of people uh, uh, avoid to use the public transportation and move from the transit to the cars. So this is the first uh, situation. And, and then when uh, public uh, transit agency uh, do more uh, measures or do more uh, actions to to show you to build up to to rebuild the trust to our passengers. That's a uh, uh, use of public transportation is safe, and we can find some uh, readership is coming back. So this is why I I saw today you, you can find a little bit as a uh, from the uh, at the end of the June the the congestion index is going down, and Beijing come back to uh, for example Beijing. A uh, 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 restart. It's a uh, it's a uh, uh, the digital uh, the the car plate the digital is a f uh, forbidden uh, scheme. Yeah. Thank you, Daizong. Uh, the next question we have is for Benayak. Um, Benayak, how do you anticipate um, using the Tumi vehicles when the city reopens again, or how do you plan to adapt services? Um, once the city is is reopening. Oh, you're on mute. Um, okay, yeah. I think we can hear you now. Yeah, thank you. Actually, uh, we we have not uh, earned the uh, revenue from the uh, vehicles in the lockdown period, and um, so we uh, don't have the uh, future planning uh, about the uh, home service by the existing vehicles. Yes, if uh, if the JIZ or any other uh, donor um, will willingly come to uh, give, uh, give other uh, donations uh, or other uh, small funds to create this type of pilots uh, by using uh, five or seven or 10 vehicles, uh, for uh, distributing the delivering the uh, home products door to door, then we will uh, obviously we will try. Thank you. Um, let's see what the next question is. Okay, the next question is, now that large cities like Beijing have reopened, are people once again trusting public transport? Do you have any data on ridership? I think that's for you, Dezong. First of all, I use, a, uh, when Beijing reopened, I use a public transportation every day now. I use a bus to, to, to office. And uh, secondly, uh, when we see the readership of the metro system, it's uh, almost the 80% readership is coming back as normal. But for the bus, the surface, the, the, the bus system, the traditional bus system, it looks like it's only 
than 60% of the readership coming back. So people have more concern about bus more than the metro system. Because they think the metro system have a lot of measures can keep their safe. But the bus system is quite, uh, sometimes it's quite the, the quality is not so good. So bus is still a problem. Yes, that's all. Thank you. Um, for the folks from DD, can you talk a little bit about how you were able to deploy new services so quickly in tandem with the government um, in response to the pandemic? Uh, try on to talk about it. Or if Shai is not on, I think Shai is not on. Uh, let, me, let me try to answer that question. So, um, so back then uh, when the virus broke out in China, right? So uh, it was actually right in the middle of the Chinese New Year, right? So as I think you can recall. So it was quite a rush uh, for all the companies and all the people to get together. And uh, the first city, uh, Wuhan, uh, where, uh, when, when the, which was the epicenter of the, of the virus, uh, uh, the company actually we managed to um, to send a lot of uh, local employees uh, on the ground to get assembled in the middle of this holiday to begin the slot. And uh, we uh, actually mobilized a lot of internal resources to do it. Uh, when it comes to uh, Brazil and other countries internationally, uh, so it was a lot tougher. Uh, we actually, for example, the shipment of masks uh, since you know the first wave uh, of the pandemic, uh, it was like uh, undersupplied or out of stock, literally everywhere. And uh, we had to uh, place a specific orders uh, on an urgent basis uh, to suppliers we, we could get the, the masks locally and also internationally. Uh, and also try to accelerate the shipment by uh, asking uh, the expedited uh, custom process to get it uh, ready for the local use. So it was a collective effort and together with the local authorities and also uh, uh, the different branches of the company uh, to make that happen. Uh, but still, we are seeing a lot of challenges going ahead and uh, we are even optimizing the process to make it happen in a more uh, efficient manner. Thank you. Uh, Shui, would you like to add anything um, to that about how you were able to deploy services so quickly in response to the pandemic? Uh, sorry, I got uh, reconnected. I was a little miss about that question um on the how how we mobilize our resources that quickly to um get things on the ground right yes okay so basically we already have a strong uh, ground team in major cities in china already for our basic operations and when uh, the outbreak comes and uh, we know that the first city of wuhan got locked down and we have people in Wuhan. So basically we have a special tax force in Wuhan to support government. When government wants uh, to organize a new fleet to um, provide supplies to uh, drivers and to um, the medical workers, uh, we have people on the ground and um, uh, we, we act um, at the speed of an internet company. That's um, when people need to do um, dispatching of cars using phones and it calls for different drivers to pick up one person from one location to another. Uh, we provide a, a solution that basically the government can actually use technology, use our app. Uh, so um, that, that is a, a combination of um, reacting, having the troop on the ground and also having the um, speed and technology that we have as an internet company. Thank you very much. Um, let me just see what our next question is here. I have a question to our DD folks. Is that okay? Yes, of course. I, I, yes, as I know, because the demand drop off very much, the Uber in US, they are launched some uh, free service, like a uh, logistic service. Is DD have a similar plan to to, to like a deliver the, the, the medicine a, a, a food deliverable? Do, do you have any plan in Brazil in in China? Uh, thanks, Taizong, for that question. Uh, I think we uh, we did we begin to the uh, the the free donation. I think you refer to the free rights, right? So 
uh, we actually had uh, in Brazil, for example, uh, we launched the, the rice donation uh, to uh, a couple of cities. So we actually donated more than uh, six million TIs equivalent rights uh, to all the cities, uh, to the medical workers, essential workers. Uh, so whenever they use the service, I will give them a specific coupon. So they enter the coupon app and then that trip will be free for them. So that's what we did. Uh, secondly, is that we launched also the donation to uh, the, um, the, I mean, so, sorry, the rights of donation and uh, a donation of goods and donation of blood. So we also support them by uh, giving them free food. Uh, so more than 80,000 patients actually met me from that program already. Of course, we know this is far uh, than uh, being enough. Uh, we will continue to do that, uh, hopefully in more countries. We actually have the similar program in Mexico. It becomes uh, very, very popular in a, a very short period of time. Uh, but of course, we know this comes with a lot of responsibility that is beyond our normal scope. And uh, we just have to keep doing it, keep optimizing it uh, to really make a, a, an alternative option to the public transportation system while it's unavailable during this pandemic. Yeah. So thank you so much to each of our panelists and to our co-hosts of the Resilience and Transportation webinar series. Make sure you're following us on Twitter to learn about the next webinar in the series, which will be in a few weeks. And we will post the recording um, of the webinar today on social media, as well as the NEMO Alliance website. So thank you so much for sharing your lessons with us. Um, I think we all have a lot to learn, um, especially from the United States and North America, which is where we're based. So we really appreciate it and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.